So in about a month, I will be starting to combine Torchlight and Build Your Library Level 1. So you guys, I have been thinking about and planning how I'm going to combine these two programs for probably over a year. And I have done a ton of research. I've gone on different groups and talked to different people about how they have combined it. And I am just really, really excited. So in this video, I'm going to share specifically how I plan to combine these two programs, as well as show you which resources I am pulling from the programs. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I'm a mom to four. I love to homeschool. I love to read good books and I love to share both of those things on this channel. So if you also like those things, please consider subscribing. Both Build Your Library and Torchlight are secular literature based homeschool programs. And before you get potentially put off by the secular aspect of these homeschool programs, I want to share with you that we are a Christian homeschool family and we use a number of different religious curriculums, but I also find so much value in some of the secular programs. And I think they can be easily overlooked, but I don't think they should be. And for me personally, I find a lot of freedom and I feel confident to integrate and weave my faith throughout all of the different learning we do in our homeschool. Because of that, I feel like I can easily pick up some of these wonderful, beautiful, book-rich programs and use them to their fullest. And I'm actually considering making a video about being a Christian homeschooler that uses secular curriculum and how I do that and why I do that and what are my strategies for that. So if anybody's interested in that, please leave a comment below and I will prioritize making that video. As for why I'm so excited, so excited about these two programs is the books. Oh my gosh, you guys, the book lists are just amazing. I get so excited just looking at them and planning them, collecting all the different books and resources. I also love that it's planned out for me. There is a schedule that goes along with it. Granted, I don't have to follow it perfectly and I never do, but there's a schedule that will help me not have to plan it myself. And it schedules everything except for math and language arts, which let's be honest, I don't want that scheduled anyway. I have the programs I really like. And if you're interested in what we use for math and language arts, I'll just put up my homeschool curriculum playlist because I have a number of different videos just detailing and reviewing a bunch of programs. But this is all the other stuff that I want to incorporate into our homeschool day. So you might be thinking that is two full programs. How do you plan on using that in a year? And the simple answer is I don't plan on using it in a year. I plan on stretching it probably over a year and a half is my general plan. And I've been thinking about this and the reason I'm doing that is the age of my kids. So currently, as this video is being made, my son just turned seven and my daughter is five and a half. And then in a year and a half, he will be eight and a half and she will be seven. And so these two programs are geared towards six to eight year olds. And so I feel like that puts us really in a sweet spot that if I try to just do one of the programs over the course of the year, I feel like she would always be on the younger side. And I want her to be able to really appreciate and learn a lot from these programs. And that gives me the flexibility to incorporate kind of the best of both programs over that year and a half. I also don't plan on using either program in their entirety. And I think that will help us out to make it into about a year and a half time frame. So I do plan on using Build Your Library primarily kind of as our base program and the reason is is I just really enjoy build your library programs we've used a number of them so I use the build your library level zero around the world it was kind of the kindergarten program and I have a walkthrough review of that I can link above and we are currently using the prehistory unit study through build your library I am really enjoying it my kids are really enjoying that and I will be putting out a video on that shortly kind of detailing the program as well as showing you all the extra resources we put into that because my son really wanted to learn more about dinosaurs. And so we are loving that program. So I knew I loved Build Your Library. I knew I loved her books and her ability to choose good books and they really jives well with my kids. And so I know that so I can kind of trust that. So I know I will be using Build Your Library as kind of our base program. Um, let me just detail specifically what I will be using from each program. So for Build Your Library, that is where we're getting the majority of our history. And that program uses Story of the World. Currently, it is in the process of switching and updating, but I liked Story of the World, so I'm fine with the fact that Story of the World will be the history is fine. And Torchlight, I think, goes with Curiosity Chronicles, which I've never used, but I wasn't sure if I would like kind of a dialogue style history. 
I just wanted to go with Story of the World because I'm pretty sure I will like it and my sister gave me some resources so I already had it. So I will be doing history primarily through Build Your Library and potentially bringing in some history books from Torchlight. But other things from Build Your Library, we will also be using the literature, so all of the read-alouds, which I'm really excited about a lot of those, as well as poetry and art study and the science, which I just recently put out a video about picking that science, and I'll link that above if I still have some links. And the science is nature study in this level, so I'm really excited about that. But as for Torchlight, I was also very excited about the read-aloud list, so their literature list I was excited about as well. And really in my head, my plan is to be able to look through both of those lists and pick the books, one that a lot of people like and highly recommend, but two that are appropriate for my kids because they're a little bit on the sensitive side. So there are a few books, I think, especially on the Build Your Library side that might have some content that my kids just aren't ready for, which is totally fine. I can put those books off a little bit and supplement with some of the Torchlight options. And some other things about Torchlight I'm excited about was this thing called Geography Inquiry, I think it is. And it's really this aspect of the program that helps the kids understand kind of their place in the world, if you will. So it always starts with like where they're located, finding where they're located on the globe, and then finding the location on the globe of the area that we are talking about in history. And just kind of being able to have that as a reference point, I feel like there's just a lot of power in that, especially for kids that really can't see beyond where they live very easily at these ages. So I liked that aspect of Torchlight. So I will be using a lot of their geography kind of stuff. The next thing I'm going to be using with Torchlight is what's called their vocabulary spellbook, which is one of the PDF downloads, which I had printed. And it's basically just a way to do vocabulary. And so my plan is to take vocab words from both programs and utilize this spellbook. And really what it is, is it's just trying to make vocabulary study a little bit more fun. And I think at this age, it's not that big of a deal, but it's a good time to kind of highlight some words in more of a casual way than a true like vocabulary curriculum or anything like that. And the other thing about Torchlight, oh, is their literature primers. And so let me just show you. That's one thing that I was really impressed with when I was looking at their program was these primers and basically it's in the back of the book and each book gets kind of a page or two or however long it takes and what i really like is the top part it really makes the parent aware of any aspects of the book that might need some extra conversation say like there's bullying or say the siblings are not treating each other well and you can take those examples and utilize them in your conversation with your kids but it's nice to have a heads up and then down here is some questions kind of based on per chapter that you can be using as you're reading the book, which mind you, Build Your Library has questions as well. They're integrated more into the weekly schedule. So as you're reading the book, whatever the assigned pages are, you can look for the questions in the schedule. And I think they both do a good job. And really for me as like a, I don't know, I'm a third year homeschooling mom at this point, I still feel like I need some help as to like what questions to ask, like how to draw answers out of my kids. What are some good and proper expectations for as we're reading these read alouds? So the last thing I wanna do is I just wanna show you some of the books cause I get very excited about books and maybe you do as well. And it'd be nice to see some of these books. And just so you know that these book lists for both of these programs are available online. So I'm not sharing anything that's like copyrighted or anything like that. They both have their book lists publicly published but you would have to buy the programs to get the schedules and the questions and all the extra stuff. But the book lists are available. And one thing to note, which I should have probably at the beginning of the video, both of these are PDF downloads. So you get them via PDF and then you can have them printed, which is what I did. So to go through some resources, so Build Your Library, I'll do that first since that's kind of my base program. So starting with history. And like I said, there is an update in process. I literally think it's this month. So I think it's like February, March of 2021, where she's working on updating the history of level one to include a program that's called History Quest, which is a bit more secular, I believe is the reason. And Story of the World is more of a neutral program, which for me, I'm fine with. I'm fine with Story of the World. I have some of the resources, so I'm happy I have the original program but I probably will get the update and probably pick up History Quest just to see if I like the program. And I think it also has a lot of these telling history through a story format. I also do have the CDs, which I don't know where I'm gonna play them, probably in the car. So if I don't have time to read the history, I have this available for me. And so for the history program, 
which is like right here. It is the story of the world, like I just was saying, the story of the world plus the Us Born Encyclopedia of World History. And so that is this program, which we are currently using for prehistory as well. It has wonderful pictures. It has kind of good blurbs and it, it works for my kids. They, they can stay engaged. It's not a page of text. And then there's links that you can go to to watch like short video clips or learn extra information on the Us Born website. So we use that all the time. So I'm really glad that the level one program is continuing to use that Us Born encyclopedia of world history because we really like it. And then for the rest of the history, which I know you probably can't see this too well, but I have made notes to myself that most of this is available at my library. And so for me, I just can't bring myself to buy everything. I buy what I need or what I think that we will really enjoy and potentially read again. And then I get a lot of stuff from the library. Although I did pick up a couple books that were not available and so I will show you those. And so we picked up The Archaeologist Dig for Clues and then I picked up Hieroglyphs, which looks great because there's actually stencils as part of the book. And so your kids, I believe, can write their own hieroglyphics. And so that just sounds super fun and like a great activity for my kids. It looks like the rest of these I can get from the library. So it's like one on Cleopatra, one on Pompeii, Pythagoras, the Great Wall of China, and other ancient Egypt books. And so I'm going to get a lot of those from the library and we'll be reading those. And then as for the poetry book, it is this one and I have lost the dust jacket. My kids don't do very well with keeping those in good condition, so I just usually get rid of them. And so this is the National Geographic Book of Nature Poetry and I love this book. We've already read a lot of poems from this book, so we've kind of read ahead for this, but we're excited about picking this up. Next, I'm gonna show you the art books. So there's two art books for this program, and I did pick this up a while ago. I think these are harder to get, but I do have them, so we're gonna be using them. And it's the art book for children, the white one and the yellow one, which I think that's also part of her update is because those are so hard to get, but we have them, so we will be using those. As for lit books, okay, so I think I have like a third of the books, but these were the ones that were either needed early on in the program because like I said, I'm taking a year and a half to do this, so we won't get to some of these books for like a whole year. So I have some time to get them. But some of the books that we currently have, I have Cappy Boppy, which just looks really cute. It's about this, basically this marmot that comes and lives with this family and it's supposed to be really cute. And then I picked up the Tales from the Odyssey book one, and this is by Mary Pope Osborne, which is also the Magic Treehouse writer. And so this is part one, and part two is also part of the program, and we'll just pick that up when we need to. And so this definitely covers a lot of the Greek history. So those look great. And then Charlotte's Web, oh, so good. And this one I'm looking forward to, This so this is the Egyptian Diaries. I've heard great things about this book, that it really helps the kids get into the life of like an everyday, person and there's not a lot of like big adventure or tomb raiding or like danger or anything like that. It's like following this child who becomes a scribe in ancient Egypt. So that sounds great. And there's also the book Poppy, which we actually have already read and we loved this book. So Poppy and 26 Fairmont Avenue and The Tale of Despero, which I think might be our next book that we're picking up and I am so excited for it. I've heard that there are some like more dangerous sort of sections, but I think that'll be fine. I'll probably pre-read this just to double check, but I think it sounds really good and really cute about a mouse and an adventure. And then the last book, I have a really old copy of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And so we will be reading this one or at least listening to the audiobook because the audiobook is available at our library. And so those are the ones I have. There's a couple others that I don't have yet, like Nim's Island, Slave, Baby, Roman Diaries. So I only have a few more to pick up actually now that I'm looking at the list. Okay, as for science, I'm gonna run through these books fairly quickly because I did highlight this program in my last video where I talked about what science we will be using in the spring. So like I said, it's Nature Study. And the primary spine book or resource for the science then is The Nature Connection. And then there's some really pretty books that go with it. It's The Natural World, and it has just some really, really pretty, gorgeous pictures. So we will be loving that one. And a quick little read aloud. It's called The Tarantula in My Purse and 172 Other Wild Pets. I think my kids will like that. And this one's The Peregrine's Journey, so it's a story about migration, learning about bird migration. And then the program also uses the one small square books, and it uses a number of them. Let me get them organized. So this one is Woods, Pond, and 
backyard. They have great illustrations and there's lots of good learning and good text on the pages. So we really enjoy those. And the last book I have here for Build Your Library is one of our favorites and it is Heroes of the Environment. And we have read a bit of this already. We really enjoy it. It is true stories of people who are helping to protect our planet. It highlights when kids start doing really cool things for the environment and it's just really neat. And it tells their story usually up into adulthood and what they do with these ideas. Okay, as for Torchlight, like I said, we probably won't be purchasing too many of the books. I have amazing library systems, so I'm very thankful for that. So a lot of the books are at the library. Like for instance, we just finished this one because we were doing like the prehistory unit and this is called Nadia Knox and the Eye of Zinnia, which we really enjoyed. The kids really liked it. It was a little bit more adventurous and so we really liked that. I did actually pick up this book, which I don't think is in the Torchlight curriculum, but it might be in the supplements and that's the gods and goddesses of ancient Egypt. So it's Egyptian mythology for kids. So we'll probably use this to supplement both programs is to kind of pull in this resource, which is really not written into either program, but it looked really pretty and I think I will be utilizing it and enjoying it. But my plan is to be making notes in the Build Your Library schedule for when I need to pull in Torchlight material. So like for instance, here is, I think this is week two, and you can see I've already made some notes as to Torchlight. So it's like Torchlight week two and week three cover similar time frames as it does for week two of Build Your Library. So I made note of that and that way I know when I'm doing my planning that I need to open up Torchlight and kind of add to the Build Your Library schedule the books that I find interesting or want to either replace or things like that. So that's my general plan for kind of combining them. I probably won't do it perfectly and I'll probably drop the ball on some weeks but I really just love all the resources and I feel like I can pull kind of the best of both worlds and just take a little bit more time on ancient history, which is just a fascinating time to learn more about. And my kids are just really jazzed to learn more about like the mummies and all of that stuff. So that is my plan for combining these two programs. Are you interested in potentially doing that? Have you even heard of Build Your Library or Torchlight or have you used any of them? Please let me know all of this down below. I'm so excited. I get very excited about literature-based curriculum, if you cannot tell. And so please comment below and we'll have a discussion and just geek out over all the lit-based curriculum. So thank you for taking the time to watch this. I hope it was helpful. And if it was, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel if you aren't already subscribed, and I will see you in the next homeschooling video. All right, have a wonderful day. Okay.